Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to our random review. Today's random review comes from 1971 and it's The Hunting Party, directed by Don Medford, starring Oliver Reed, Candice Bergen, um, Gene Hackman, G.D. Spradlin, um, Simon Oakland, L.Q. Jones, Mitchell Ryan. And this is just a wonderful 70s bleak nihilistic Western. Um, 1971 was an interesting year for Oliver Reed because um, he was also in Ken Russell's The Devils in the same year, or they both came out in the same year. Um, Don Medford, um, as far as films, he didn't make that many. He made The Organization, which was the third film in the um, Sidney Poitier Mr. Tibbs series, the third and the weakest one. But he did um, shoot episodes for 75 television shows in the States, which is quite impressive. Um, now, this film definitely owes a debt to the Wild Bunch. Um, a lot of the violence is shot in slow motion, and it's fairly bloody and brutal. Um, and there's lots of big squibs that go off on people's bodies with lots of the red, red groovy. Um, it's interesting in the fact that, you know, you would think by the cover, the fact it's called The Hunting Party, that it's a kind of riff on the most dangerous game. I guess there's an element in that, but it's not really. Um, the film opens with a wonderful um, intercutting between a cow having its throat cut and its heart pierced and Gene Hackman... Um, and Candice Bergman, Bergman, Candice Bergman, I'm going to say that all the time, Candice Bergen um, having sex, but it's hard to tell that it's consensual. And they are husband and wife, but Jean Hackman is like bending her fingers back during intercourse and basically causing her pain during intercourse. So it's fairly evident that there's going to be a link between sex and violence throughout the film and Gene Hackman's character is a bit of a sexual sadist. Um, Candace Bergen does go through the ringer in this film. Obviously, it's a 70s film and um, women didn't have too much luck in 70s films um, and this is no exception. So, Regina Hackman's character is very rich, and his rich friends um, come and they do go on a, a hunting party for a fortnight. They have this lavish train, which is very much like the train in Once Upon a Time in the West. Um, you know, this film borrows little bits from westerns the way Once Upon a Time in the West did. Um, so, the the score is very Morricone-like in various places. Um, obviously there's the Peckinpah influence um, and the violence and this very opulent train. And they go and there's women in the train. You know, they're all like married and rich and oil barons and cattle barons. Um, and it is very much a film about class. Um, even though, remember, in America there's no such thing as a class system, apparently. Um, and during um, a session where they're all getting drunk and pretty much using the women on the train, um, Gene Hackman takes a candelabra to his companion. So again, you can tell he's um, somewhat unhinged. He is a sexual sadist. Um, but then the person cutting the throat of the cow at the start is Oliver Reed, who is in an imperious form. Again, as I've stated before, 
and Nazrin Prod did a good video on a biography of Oliver Reed. Um, growing up in the UK in the 80s, our perception of Oliver Reed was we just saw him drunk on t in chat shows and TV shows. But when you actually watch his films, he was great. You know, he wasn't just good. Oliver Reed was great. Um, and he's absolutely wonderful in this as well. Um, imposing, but he shows a lighter side. So he's got a crew that nobody wants anywhere near the town. Um, so when all these rich men go off with their whores and their trains to enjoy themselves, um, Oliver Reed and his gang come into the town and kidnap Candice Bergen. Um, for money and for the other reason that Oliver Reed wants her to teach him how to read and write as they kidnap her near a school, of course. Um, and obviously the men, especially L.Q. Jones, um, wants to essentially um, rape her and Oliver Reed stops him halfway through um, and it builds up the animosity because some of the, the men in Reed's crew are he broke out of prison um, and obviously men when they've come out of prison they've only got one thing in their minds apparently um, but then later Reed essentially rapes Bergen I told you Bergen goes through hell in this film um, but then she grows to like him, which again is that dangerous fallacy that film sometimes produce about you know women falling for their attacker and all of that nonsense. Um, but it's a seventies film, so that's the way the world was in the seventies. Um, but one of the key things when Gene Hackman. Um, gets a telegram to say his wife has been kidnapped, which is wonderfully shot because at the time he's in bed with two women that aren't his wife. Um, so he decides to get the posse of this rich group of men who are used to getting other people doing the work for them to go, and he's not interested in getting them to prison. He wants them all killed. Now, as a gift, he bought all these rich people... Um, J.D. Spradlin with black hair, which is a rare sight. Simon Oakland, of course, we all love from Kolchak. Um, he's given them these rifles, these special new rifles that can hit a target 800 yards away um, because they don't want to get up close and personal with these outlaws because they would never win. But they want to keep their distance and shoot them from a distance because that's how rich people work. They don't want to get their hands too dirty even though in a wonderful um, scene later in the film um, when they're actually confronted by one of the men that they've shot from a distance who isn't quite dead um, one of them is kind of repulsed by this and says it's not like killing an animal is it um, so again it's almost this distance of if you kill somebody from a distance you know it's not personal you know whereas obviously killing somebody face to face you know, it's much more um, intense and obviously personal. It's just a it's a tremendous film about um, violence um, and um, kind of ownership, and again the idea that women as just objects to own. Um, again, which is something that appears in quite a lot of. 70s films you know because Gene Hackman doesn't love his wife or anything he just has her to essentially amuse himself with his sadistic um, acts in bed um, and obviously Oliver Reed um, after he's raped her obviously is much more caring about her um, initially starves her and that's how caring is. He initially starves her um, until she'll teach him the alphabet. Um, until there's a, there's a wonderful scene involving a jar of peaches 
um, Under a Wagon, which is just so beautifully acted as Reed and um, Mitchell Ryan are tasting the peaches and um, Candice Bergen is desperately trying not to drool um, before the inevitable happens. But Reed is just so wonderful in that scene. He doesn't really say anything. None of the actors do. But it's just a great little scene between the three um, actors. And obviously, as the film progresses, the rich pals of Gene Hackman, you know, want less and less to do with it. Um, especially when one of their own gets shot. Um, again, they they deal with distance. They don't want up personal. Um, but it's obvious that Gene Hackman is psychopathic. And again, justice was never in his mind. He doesn't really care about his wife. It was just an excuse to essentially play the most dangerous game. But again, from a distance, not to actually get your hands dirty. Um, so, I mean, Hackman is fantastic as this sadistic swine. But again, because it's the 70s, you have that ambiguity between, wait, who am I supposed to root for here? Am I supposed to root for the husband who's had his wife kidnapped and assaulted? But he assaults her whenever he can. Um, or should I root for the guy who kidnapped her but also sexually assaulted her? But he seems like a, a nicer guy um, than her husband. So again, it, you couldn't make this film now exactly the same. And if you did, the audiences would be confused. But it's like, because there's no clear goody and baddie. Because both the men are pretty much baddies. Um, even though because it's Oliver Reed, we obviously root for Oliver Reed over Gene Hackman. Because um, Gene Hackman's just a psychopath. Oliver Reed... Um, apart from the rapey bit, is just trying to survive, trying to get money. You know, he has a wonderful speech when the men are kind of bickering amongst each other um, that, you know, this is their last chance to get some money. This is their last chance. They're all, they've used all their chances up. I mean, some of them, as I said, were broken out of prison. You know, we're down to our last chance. If we don't make it this time, if we don't get money and get out and settle down, that's us. Um... So of course we're on Oliver Reed's side, um, because Gene Hackman is a nasty piece of work. But again, because he's rich, because he has rich friends, you know, they're the establishment, they're what's acceptable. So what he does to Candace Bergen behind, you know, at night in their own house, behind closed doors, you know, that doesn't matter, does it? Um, even though he's thoroughly nasty. Um, it's just a fantastic, bleak, nihilistic film with a 70s ending, and you know what that means. It's just tremendous. Again, I don't know whether this is a Blu-ray, it's got a Blu-ray, um, but I can understand if it doesn't, because it's hardly a feel-good um, film, but there wasn't that many feel-good films in the 70s. <laughs> um, that's another example of why the 70s were arguably the last great decade for American cinema. Um, yeah, and Oliver Reed is just so good in this film. I've been meaning to pick it up for ages since I kind of went on that Oliver Reed. You know, mainly thanks to Indicator because they've got a lot of Oliver Reed films. And I think it is good to remember that Oliver Reed was great on top of his form before, sadly, alcohol got the better of him. Um, but he's absolutely spectacular in this. Everybody is, really. I mean, Candace Bergen, again, as I said, gets treated really badly. Um, but she's fantastic in it as well. And a great cast of character actors, as I say. Um, and it's just a very good um, psychological western, apart from anything else. But it does have good slow-motion slow action scenes of people being shot. Um and it's just quite fantastic. So that's The Hunting Party, directed by Don Medford, who, as I said, did more TV than film. Um, and yes, it's desperate. it does have a... Um, there's no doubt that somebody saw The Wild Bunch um, and somebody saw Sergio Leone films. But that's not a bad thing. So thanks very much for watching.
please let me know if you've seen The Hunting Party and what you think of it. And hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Saying farewell.